we are also trying to get a, a, a deeper understanding of what are the mid and long term goals of the Argentinian government with respect to blockchain technology. Do they want to explore identity solutions, supply chain solutions, um, real estate, uh, tokenization? Uh, there's a lot of great opportunities, but these do require a political will in order to be able that was uh, Cardano founder Charles Hoskinson hinting at uh, them working, Cardano working with the Argentinian government to help bring potentially a majority of that entire economy on the Cardano network. So much bullish things are happening in the Cardano ecosystem in this video. We're going to talk about, we're going to show you the remainder of that video and what exactly Charles said as him and the team are down in Buenos Aires, Argentina right now. Going to give you an update on the Chang hard fork and why an indicator is flashing buy, buy, buy on Cardano. I'm going to cover all that in the video. So like the video, subscribe, and let's get started. You constantly hear institutions don't want Cardano. It's all retail. It's all retail. Well, here we have an article here. Institutional investors show interest in Cardano triggering a 300% surge. On July 29th, CoinShares, a leading firm in the crypto uh, ETP industry, also known as ETF, uh, released a weekly report on the fund flows of various digital assets. More impressively, Cardano recorded a surge in inflows into its ETP, totaling approximately $1.2 million. This massive inflow surge represents a whopping 300% addition from the previous week. Furthermore, Cardano's strong performance has effectively placed its second among all crypto ETPs. CoinShares reports that institutional investors have invested a total of $11 million into Cardano-oriented investment products. Additionally, Cardano's month-to-date inflow has seen about $2.4 million. July was a good month for Cardano, as you can see here from Token Terminal on the financial statement. Token trading volume in the month of July, as you can see here, up 17%, sitting at just over $11.4 billion. Some of it was due to some uh, popular meme coins. We know uh, uh, Charles Hoskinson's pig, Nike. Uh, that meme coin was created. That saw a little bit of volatility and uh, and some price action there, which in turn, of course, people need ADA to pay for the gas fees. And then the ADA chart I mentioned. So there's two time frames. The first one we're going to take a look at is the daily time frame. Now, I do have a couple things on here. I have the Lux Algo price action concepts indicator, which kind of gives me a brief overview Where's the buying happening? Where's the selling happening? Where's a good area to buy? Where's a good area to sell? What are the good zones? You can see here, uh, we are getting close to this discount zone, which I'll show you on the weekly chart why that is so important. And that sits on the daily chart and the daily time frame, right between 30.5 and 32.7 cents. We are not too far off, currently sitting at 36.8 cents. We did have this big volume note here on the daily, uh, but it turned out to be a lot of selling happening as price uh, started to push back up towards this area right around that 45 cent level. We got rejected. We came back to retest this equilibrium zone between 41.4 and 42.4 cents. Got rejected again. Uh, this volume note area here between 38.6 and around 39 cents. That turns out to be selling as well. But this area here between 33.5 and 34.5, so that one cent area there, uh, we did see more buying than selling. And actually, last time price visited this area, Cardano gained around 32% in a matter of 10 days. But the big indicator here that is flashing to us that it might be time to buy some Cardano, and I'm going to remove the volume range profile, and we're going to keep on our Lux Algo price action concepts indicator. This big discount zone that goes all the way from $0.08 cents up to 36.7 cents has been a very good area for Cardano. Last time Cardano came into this area, this was back in one candle. This was on the, the week of June. This is June, uh, June 5th, 2023. That week Cardano came down into the zone and it rallied around 38%. It stayed in the zone for a few weeks. And when we saw the breakout from this discount zone, Cardano rallied almost 200%. Guess where we are now? We are currently at the brink of entering into our discount zone. Now, more recently, this was back uh, the week of Monday, July 8th of this year, Cardano dipped into this uh, pre uh, discount zone, and from lower wick to higher wick, it gained 35%.
Of course, nothing is guaranteed. This is all probabilities. These are indicators. Technical analysis is not saying something's for sure going to do something. It's just, hey, what are the probabilities that scenario A versus scenario B is going to happen? And, and history tells us scenario A that is most likely to happen is Cardano sees a price reversal and starts moving to the upside. Will we see a 40% move to the upside? Will we see another 200% move to the upside? Either way, you can make a lot of money, especially if you are trading on leverage. Now, the video I showed you in the very beginning, uh, let's play it in its entirety because there's a lot of good nuggets in there from, uh, from Charles. To make sure that the Cardano Constitutional Convention works uh, really well, and we've been investing a lot of time and money into building strategic partnerships to make that work well. Uh, so we've met with people in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, we've met with Secretary of Education, uh, we've met with officials from the University of Buenos Aires, uh, which is where we're holding the event, and we want to just make sure the logistics get done appropriately. Like, we have to speed up the visa process because people are coming from 50 different countries, and some of those countries don't have the, the strongest of treaties. Um, also, we just need to make sure that the adequate resources are put in so that the event is friction-free. More broadly, though, um, moving beyond the event, we are also trying to get a, a, a deeper understanding of what are the mid- and long-term goals of the Argentinian government with respect to blockchain technology. Do they want to explore identity solutions, supply chain solutions, um, real estate, uh, tokenization? Uh, there's a lot of great opportunities, but these do require a political will in order to be able to get implemented. This is just such a good fit. Yeah, Javier Malay, very outspoken. You got Charles Hos Hoskinson, very outspoken. People love Javier, people love Charles. Uh, feels like a match made in heaven, this Cardano-Argentina thing that's going to happen. How much of their government services and economy is going to be on chain in the next 5 to 10 to 20 years? And it looks like Cardano's got a head start on the rest of the, the blockchains, the layer ones. Seems like they're making some connections down there in Argentina with politicians, with Ministry of Foreign, uh, Foreign Affairs, with governments. So a lot of exciting things. Now, Argentina might not be the largest economy in the world, but they do rank number 25 in the entire world. You can see here from uh, georank.org, coming in at $519 billion in GDP. Again, ranked 25th. But in South America, they are ranked number two behind only Brazil. We saw what happened in El Salvador when a new president came in, upended the entire country, threw the criminals in jail, started paying back their loans, started adopting a Bitcoin strategy, and that it seems like in such a short period of time, a, a switch just flipped, and it went from the largest murder capital rate in the world to the lowest, so one of the safest countries in the world, economically booming, people are visiting there again, people are moving back to El Salvador that had previously left the country for the aforementioned reasons. Could we see something similar in Argentina? We saw rampant inflation under the last administration. We used to show numbers on our live show here, 140% year over year inflation, absolutely ridiculous. So if there is one country that is primed for a financial overhaul, it is none other than Argentina. And we are excited to see that Cardano is at the forefront of that massive revolution. Uh, speaking of Argentina and Cardano, the team is currently down there right now. And this is, uh, posted by Charles here. Constitutional committee, uh, convention is going to be one for the ages. They've been doing meetings and this all comes on the back of the much anticipated, exciting Chang hard fork. If you're watching this video, you're a Cardano fan. You probably are familiar, but just in case you forgot, Chang hard fork is going to bring in the era of Voltaire. Take the keys out, hand them to you, the community, the ADA holders. You take the uh, take the chain, the direction that you want to go. It's going to come in two parts. Part one is going to deploy governance features to Cardano and enter the technical bootstrapping phase. <clears throat> and uh, upgrade two, which is the one uh, more financially, is going to be uh, uh, move CIP 1694 out of the technical bootstrapping phase and unlocks the final features, including... Unlocking of the almost $1 billion in treasury assets that uh, the community can vote on and use to help the network grow as they see fit. Now, people are wondering, okay, well, the Noda, the, the 9.1 upgrade is ready. Well, why, why didn't the hard fork happen yet? Well, a couple things. One, you can see here on the mainnet, critical mass indicators met. 70% of SPOs and 80% of exchange liquidity must be upgraded and using the Node 9.0, uh, 9.1 version. 
And I'm going to give you guys an update on that as well. Here you can see currently this is from a cxplorer.io. Over the last eight hours, you see 32.8% of blocks were produced with the 9.1%. Over the last 24 hours, that number is 32.19%. Over the last 48 hours, that number is 30.53%. Again, this number needs to hit 70% for the hard fork combinator to go into effect. You can see here from uh, intersectmbo.org, you can see here the different statuses, who's ready, who's not. It, it goes over the exchanges. As you can see here, again, 100% of the Sancho testnet has been done. We are just waiting on mainnet, which is currently at 23% of blocks. Again, the number needs to be 70. Here you can see the exchange readiness. Uh, you can see which ones are in progress, which ones haven't started. And you can see here which exchanges have the most liquidity. You can see here Binance is number one. So Binance, Whitebit, and HCX have not started yet. And the rest of them, like Coinbase, KuCoin, Kraken, they are currently in progress. That is one thing with Cardano. It might take a little bit of time, but when it's rolled out, it is rolled out in the proper and correct way. A lot of exciting things happening for Cardano as well, as Rare Evo will be coming to our home city of Las Vegas, Nevada, and uh, Mr. Hoskinson will be a featured speaker. Uh, we look forward to meeting him and potentially doing a uh, collaboration with him, maybe a sit-down, long-form uh, conversation interview. So you want to make sure you're subscribed to our channel, ping the notification bell, because you never know, we might run into him and go live on the channel, and you want to watch that live, as it's going to be very exciting. Also, if you're going to be here for Rare Evo, drop a one in the comments section. We would love to link up with you. Uh, and say hello and, and uh, hang out at Rare Rebo. And then also the last thing I want to talk about here is the announcement of the alpha version one release of the Partner Chains Toolkit. Uh, this goes on to say this is from the IOHK blog. Some chains lack a sufficient number of validators rendering the network vulnerable to low cost attacks. The Partner Chains alpha version one release allows developers of a new blockchain network to bootstrap its security by leveraging Cardano's extensive network of stake pool operators. This release includes a toolkit which introduces the, which introduces the following innovation for developers. One is shared security. Partner chains can leverage Cardano stake pool operators to bolster their security. Mixed validator committee. Consensus model flexibility. So partner chains can implement any consensus model. Accommodating permissioned validators. You also have number four, opt-out capability. Now this one, a lot of people have pushed back on, but, but hear me out here. So this one is, Partner chains can transition to layer one status, gaining full independence from Cardano without any lock-in mechanisms. Now some say, well, well, why would you do that? Because then they won't use the ADA token as a gas fee. My thing is, is if your project is so badass and your toolkit is so good, there's no need to pigeonhole people and force them to stay in your ecosystem like some other blockchains do, and I'm not gonna mention any Polkadot, um, but the beauty of it is, hey, we built this amazing platform. We built this amazing blockchain. We got validators. We got stake pool operators. We got some of the best technology in the space, right? Come in, use our security to build up your blockchain, to build up your side chain. And if you want to, you want to do your own layer one, you can go ahead and do it, dude. We'll help you along the way. Or you can stay in the Cardano ecosystem. You have that option. That screams to me confidence, right? That screams to me confidence. Come in, let us help you, and we bet you're going to stay. And number five, SPO participation. Any Cardano SPO can become a validator for a partner chain with minimal costs related to hardware upgrades. So don't listen to the people that are saying nothing is happening in Cardano. It is a dead chain. Institutions don't want to invest in it. That is all a load of crap. All it takes is a little bit of research and some unbiased uh, research and looking into things and talking to the people in the community. Right, following some of the larger accounts, following some of the dev accounts. What are they doing? Who are they speaking to? What projects are they building? These are all things you want to uh, focus on, not just uh, random people talking about how the chain is dead when it's truly not. Uh, we're super bullish here on Cardano. Let us know if you are in the comments section. Also, come check out our live show Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.